uh, before the end of the year, at least in the side designs. And what this allows you to do is actually something that you haven't been able to do until now with SharePoint Online. And most of you probably remember size definition. And you'll want to do something like, okay, I want to create my own template, my own site definition, I'm going to create a site collection, I want to, the site collection to be different from the out-of-the-box site collection. And site designs allow you to do that. So, um, I'm running very many bits here, so things might, might go wrong, actually. But we'll see. We'll just take it. So, I'm creating a new site, I'm creating a modern site, and I picked a uh, team site in this case. And um, if you do that nowadays, you will just see team site and maybe another template here. But now we have another one here being controlled for travel, which is the site design. So I create a site here, and we're at ESPC. Let's say we're all going to ESPC next year again. So ESPC 2018. Do you know, by, by the way, where it is? No, 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 we're not allowed to comment on that. <laughs> yeah. Tracy has something on the stage. <laughs> Right, so I'm creating this, uh, this site, and because this is a modern site, it's really fast. You see, already actually in the bottom there, it's creating the site. I can add owners and members at this moment in time, but we'll just leave it as it is, and I click finish. Now, what happens right now is that I create the site, you see on the right hand now a slide out, and it's actually starting to do things. This is the site design kicking in. There we go. And it, it created a list, uh, it added two additional lists between the customer tracking and the custom, uh, customer event collateral. And it added to the left navigation. And then the cool thing, I think personally is a very cool thing, here in the bottom it says trigger flow record and create a new homepage. What we did there is actually we triggered the flow. And let's have a look at the flow. Basically what happens is that we execute the flow and we send in the URL of the site we just created. Then in the meantime here we created just for our um, um, administration an item in a list in the SharePoint tenant that tells you like, okay, this site has been created with this specific URL. So you can build up a site directory if you want to. If I scroll down here, we do another thing which is really cool. We add that URL to an Azure storage queue. And then in Azure, if I switch to Azure, we have an Azure function that picks up that URL from the queue, and then we run a PowerShell function here, and that one kicks in and uses the PNP PowerShell library to connect back to the site and apply a P provisioning template. So if I scroll a bit down here, you see the connect here to the specific URL, and here we have the apply P and P provisioning template connecting to the site and applying that template. So in the bottom here, we see already that the function completed. So if I go back to my site, there, no, over here, sorry, and click finish. Page reloads, and I have a full customized page without writing effectively a single line of code. How cool is that? And one of the things maybe to mention on that one, so over as the out of the box site design and site scripts, they, they have a set of, uh, set of uh, capabilities and actions which you can do. And what we demonstrated here is the extensibility <coughs> if those out of those capabilities are not enough for your business requirements. So you can actually that, actually extend that provisioning logic easily and still use the out of the box capabilities within SharePoint Online. And now we use PowerShell, you're not restricted to PowerShell. Anything that you can use, any remote API that you can use to a SharePoint tool work, obviously. And also a few things to notice on the site, it has a custom header, it has a custom footer, it has a custom third party vector. So it is a modern site, but it actually has a, a custom element automatically provisioned to it based on the business requirements set for this particular client, which is super cool. Yeah. So okay, that's that's the how do we create new sites. Uh, what about if you consider the success of SharePoint Online? There's a lot of existing classic sites. How do we actually tackle the classic choice talent? So how do we get the classic sites to look exactly like uh, this one? Right, so introducing another functionality that will come earlier next year. Um, right now you might hear the term groupify, but it will not be the end term, but that's what we use it internally. Um, so if you click here, you see a new item here at the bottom. We connect to the Office 365 group. So what you see on the screen is a classic team site, STS has zero. And I connect to a new group. Let's get started. Pick up the group name, and I say connect group. It picks up the owners, uh, it moves the owners to the, to the correct locations in the group two, and it's done already. And if I click finish, and we have a modern site. It changed to this, the classic site into a modern site right now. And you see that there's a, up here the group conversations, if I click on it, you will see it actually that it starts to populate the group behind the scenes. 
Uh, so now, now right. probably people in the audience are like, okay, but that's now out of the box science. So, Correct. And if we do this, that's probably not an optimal setup. So how do we actually do this in practice? So first of all, obviously, the group defined will have an API. So you're able to do exactly what you saw from a UI perspective, using an API for those sites based on your business requirements as needed. The second uh, story is that, okay, we have then uh, that uh, site now could be fine, but we still need to get the business requirements or the business, uh, the standardized welcome page to the site, potentially. Again, it's like a Samsung scenario, do you want to do that? Right. Well, one way of doing it, the way I think personally is the best way to do it, is with PowerShell. And the PMP provision engine. So if I connect to that specific site, and bear with me, it's a famous keyboard, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to flip the English US keyboard, absolutely. There we go, sites. What did I call it? Uh, 17 trip. That was the classic site. And what about connecting there, just to explain also. We use, quite often in our demos, we use uh, BMP PowerShell or PowerShell as an example, but you absolutely have a managed API, you absolutely have a REST API, and see some APIs available to make these things happen. The Power, PowerShell is just a super convenient way to, to demonstrate things uh, in practice. Right. So, I connected the BMP PowerShell to the site, and you see there's a template ESPC, and that is exactly the same template that I just applied when I did the site design. That one was available for the Azure function, but I also have it here on my file system, and I can just say apply PNP provisioning template, and that's oh, typo. You see a little notification of the fact that the base uh, site definition is different from the one we're applying to, but that is not big for me. And there we go. And if I go to the site, go to home page, there's my home page. So, <laughs> with these extensibility points, you have a great functionality upcoming where it allows you to very easily customize the look and feel of your design without actually writing <laughs> very complex lines of code. Cool. That was it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. So let's continue on our journey on, on let's 